Well, here I am. Quiet. It was a life suited for contemplation. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace. And in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious folk, I suppose. When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world, they treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, the sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. What can I say to them? What they believe is what the Chantry says, and the Chantry is infallible, yes? Maybe I am wrong. But it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy, not men, not the Chantry. But there is work to be done, and I have talked enough for now. Yes? Well, here I am. What is meant by someone like me? And there were no beautiful, charming women in the cloisters, you think? <laughs> you would be wrong. There were many lovely young initiates in the Lothering cloister. All of them chaste and virtuous. <laughs> it added to their mystique. Because then, they were forbidden. And forbidden fruit is the sweeter, no? My fruit? Well, it is not technically forbidden, but, but it's not freely given either. Not everyone gets a bite. I can't believe I'm having this conversation. <clears throat> but no, I did not take vows. The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. I was a traveling minstrel in Orlais. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. Yes? Something you need? Yes? What's on your mind? Where did you hear this? And you believe everything you hear? <laughs> Not all minstrels are spies. Most are just singers and storytellers. But some of them are... are what we call bards. Many use the two words, minstrel and bard, interchangeably. But to do so in Orlais would cause misunderstanding. Bards are minstrels and more. Spies, as you say. Some say there is a bard order, but I don't think this is true. Many bards work alone or in small groups, doing the bidding of a patron who pays for their services. If there is an organization behind it all, no one knows who they are. Some do. Mostly, it is nobles spying on other nobles. In Orlais, there is much rivalry amongst the highborn. They fight over land, influence, and the favor of the empress. But they cannot do this openly because it is impolite. And in public, they wear smiling faces and pretend to be civil. In secret, they plot and scheme to destroy each other. It is a game completely meaningless to anyone but its players. I have revealed too much, it seems. But it doesn't matter what I used to be. It is the past. The excitement of the life wears off very quickly, I'm afraid. I found myself in Ferelden and sheltered from bad weather in the Chantry. And when the storm passed, I just did not want to leave. I like to see the Maker brought me here. Yes? Something you need? Yes? What's on your mind? Yeah. 
My mother was from Denerim, and I consider myself a Ferelden. Mother served an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orle ruled. When Orle was defeated and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Orlesian, the lady returned to Orle. She took my mother with her. I was born in Orle and did not set foot in Ferelden till much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecily let me stay with her. I had no one else. She was quite old then, and she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecily than my mother. Strangely, the only thing I really remember of Mother was her scent. She kept dry flowers in her closet amongst her clothes. Small white Ferelden wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. They were very rare in Orle. But enough about that. Let us move on. Yes? Something you need? Yes? What's on your mind? I miss Valroyo. Unlike other cities where the people are the lifeblood and the character, Valroyo was her own person, and her people little more than decorations. There was always music in Valroyo, streaming from the many windows, quiet refrains and triumphant choruses, and always floating above that all, the chant, coming from the Grand Cathedral. It was magnificent. Oh, it would take me a day or two to talk about the many splendors of Orle, her golden fields, her lush meadows. Of course, there are good things and bad things about Orle, like anywhere else. Sometimes I miss it dearly, and sometimes I'm glad I'm rid of it. And you will laugh at this, but I miss the fine things I had in Orle. Dresses, fine dresses and furs, and shoes, of course. One can't mingle with nobility with bad shoes, you see. Ole is very fashionable. Almost ridiculously so. <gasps> but the shoes! Living with those ridiculous trends was worth it for the shoes. Sometimes, about ten years ago, all the ladies went mad for shoes with soles as large and heavy as bricks. But it isn't always that silly. When I left Orle, the fashion was shoes with delicate tapered heels and embellishments in the front. A ribbon, perhaps, or embroidery. In soft colors, of course, it was spring. I wouldn't want to run in it, or have to enter battle, but for lounging in a lady's sitting room? Perfect. The shoes made in Orle were exquisite. Not at all like these clunky, fur-lined leather boots you have in Ferelden. Yeah, just look at them. Thank you. It's kind of you to say so, even wearing these mud-covered horrors. They're sturdy shoes, but sometimes a girl just wants to have pretty feet. Oh, I could talk about shoes all day, but we have things to do, don't we? Why are we stopping? There are dark spawn to be fought. Is this delay needful? You are concerned. No need. I am fit enough to fight. No. People are not simple. They cannot be summarized for easy reference in the manner of... The elves are a lithe, pointy-eared people who excel at poverty. I am. I have always fought in war, elf. Some of them. They aren't all alike. Generally, I do not see how this matters. Seheron and Parvolan are distant. Ferelden and the Darkspawn are immediate. As you wish. Yes. Sitting, as you observed. Thank you.
I did. Parshera. Was there anything else? Speak, then. Then I suggest we move on. I am hardly surprised. To answer a question, the Arishok asked what is the blight. By his curiosity, I am now here. Yes. Never. I cannot go home. It doesn't matter now. Can we move on? We keep the Darkspawn waiting. As you wish.